Right, hi guys. Uh, National five model paper B paper one. I'm just going to go run through the solutions as I said on Tuesday or Wednesday. No need to watch the whole thing. Just watch the stuff that you are stuck with. Okay, so I'm just going to run through this relatively quickly. But if there's anything else you need help with, obviously you can give a shout out the model or ask each other. So question one, you're evaluating five halves minus two and three halves. Five and a half, sorry, minus two and three halves. So firstly, what you need to do here is turn these into uh, mixed uh, numbers in, in proper fractions, so that five and a half. You know, in five holes, you've got ten halves plus another half will give you eleven halves, and then you're taking away two and three fifths, which means you're taking away thirteen fifths. Okay, now because you're adding subtracting, we're going to use a smile and a kiss, so we're going to multiply these together two and five, and then we're going to multiply the eleven and the five and the two and the th uh, thirteen to help us. Okay, so when we do 2 times 5, that means the denominator is going to be 10. And then 11 times 5 is 55. And then 2 times 13 is 26. Okay, so 55 minus 26 is 29 over 10. Now you could turn it back into a mixed number at the end, but you're not going to get any marks for that. So let's not worry about that. You're just going to get a... Uh, one mark for getting the common denominator and then one mark for following through and getting that second one. Okay, question one, done. All right, question two here, we're going to create double brackets, so we're going to use our rainbows and multiply everything in that second bracket by that 2x. Okay, so 2x times 2x squared gives me 4x cubed. 2x times minus 5x gives me minus 10x and 2x times plus 2 gives me plus 4x and then we multiply everything by negative 3. So negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x squared. Negative 3 times negative 5x is going to be positive 15x and then negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. Okay and then you just simplify. So 4x cubed, right, no more cubes so that's going to be fine there. Uh, this here, I made a mistake on this should be minus 10x squared. Okay, so minus 10x squared minus 6x squared is going to be minus 16x squared. Plus 4x plus 15x is equal to plus 19x and then minus 6. Okay, so we're going to have one mark for the first three correct, which are now that I've fixed my mistake. One mark for the next three being correct and then a third mark for collecting your like terms properly. Okay, question three, we're changing the formula to uh, from this to Q. Now what we're going to do is have a look at what we're doing. Okay, so to get to Q, we're going to look at the sums we're doing to Q first. Okay, so the two things we're doing to Q is first we're finding the square root and then we're dividing by R. So to cancel out, we're going to do two things. We're going to do, firstly cancel out that divide by r, so we're times them by r, and then to cancel out that square root, we're just going to square it. Okay, so the first thing we're doing, multiplying by r, so it's going to be vr is equal to root q, and the next thing that we're going to have to do is squared, so the whole of this side gets squared, so vr squared is equal to q, and that's us done. So two marks, one for doing that first thing correctly and the second for doing that next thing correctly. Okay, this one's here quite an unusual question, but I think as soon as you get it, you it's quite straightforward. So for part A here, express A to D in terms of U and V. So we've got to work away from up here to down here, but we can't go direct because we don't know those vectors. We have to work away using the vectors U and V. Now the key point here is that these are congruent rectangles and not triangles, that's a typo. They're congruent rectangles and they are all the same. So that is you, 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 and the same with the Vs. So to get from A to B using vectors I know, I go here, here, then here, and then here. Okay, now that's not the only way you can go. Either way you're going to get to the same answer. So that is a U and then that's another U. Okay, then it's V and another V. So for part A there, it's two U's. So that's your rubbish, that looks like a W. Two U's and then two V's. Okay, that's your answer there. Two U's plus two V's. Okay, for part B, I'm going to change my colour to make it easier to see. Part B, 
we're going from C to E. Okay, so here, again, numerous ways you can do it, you all get the same answer. Let's go down here, then down here, and then along here. Okay, so the first two, again, is two Vs. And then this one here is going the opposite direction from U, so that is a negative U. Okay, so it's 2V minus U. And for your mark in there, that's just going to be a mark for part A and a mark for part B. Okay, let's move on. Question 5. Uh, uh, angles in a circle. Now, it's a, again, it's, this isn't a tricky question. Well, it is a tricky question because there's lots of things going on. Uh, but there's a couple of different ways you can do it. I'm going to show you one, and then I think you can see the other way, that's fine. Now, whatever way you do, you're going to have to start with the fact that this here, let's see, look at our pen again, this here is an isosceles triangle. So because that line there is radius and that line there is a radius, okay, that angle and that angle has to be the same. So that's 24 degrees there as well. Okay, now what we always tell you is to look for the, the right angles. Okay, there, we've got an isosceles triangle that we can find, but we also have a right angle there where that radius meets with that tangent. So that whole angle there is a right angle. Okay, now if that's 24 and that's 24, that's 48 degrees, which leaves 132 left in your triangle. So I know that's not going to be that there is 132 degrees. Okay, and because that's a straight line, if this is 132, that's 48 degrees there. And then looking at that big right angle triangle there, so that's really not very neat. Okay, because that's the right angle triangle there, that's 48 degrees. That is 90 degrees, which together is 138. Okay, so we've got 42 degrees left over down here in the QRS, which we're looking for. Okay, so it's 42 degrees. So that's really not very neat, but. Ah well, you can deal with it. Uh, now, that for that way, you're getting three marks. One for the 24, I reckon one when you get to the 48, and then one when you get to the 42. So in fact, no, probably not. Yeah, we'll keep it at that. I'm a bit unsure of that because the markers can change quite a lot, but we'll leave it at that. I'd imagine there might be a mark in there for the right angle as well. Okay, but that might be quite generous. Ah, who cares? Right. Uh, there is a couple of ways you can do that, but I'll just leave that like that there. Okay, question six. We're looking at simplifying algebraic fractions. Now, to simplify algebraic fractions, we know that we need to have both of these numerator terms on there factorised. So, looking at the top line, there's a common factor there of 2y, and then in brackets, it's going to be y minus 3. Okay. So there's your numerator. Your denominator is a trinomial. Okay, y, y, because that's a negative 2, it's going to be plus and minus. This has got to be 2 and 1, and then the 2 minus 1 gives me Okay, sorry, I had to pause it there. I think there's a mistake in this question. Normally, one of these brackets would be the same, and you would cancel out that bracket to see what's left. But obviously, none of these are the same, so nothing cancels. So that's just one mark, two mark. There would usually be a third mark there for a factor cancelling out and leaving a simplified fraction, but it doesn't seem to be here. So I'm just going to leave that. Right, next one there. Uh, evaluate 8 to the power of 2 thirds. Okay. A tricky question because kids like to forget it, okay, but it's just one fact, okay. One fact here, when you have fractions in your powers, the denominator of your fraction is the power of the root, okay. So if the three is in the power here, it doesn't mean cubed, it means cubed root, okay. There's a little thing called flower power that I just kind of picked up recently, uh, where because that's in the bottom like a flower or yeah, because it was on the bottom, like the flower, that's the root, okay, so the cubed root, and then the top, the power, the flower bit is the power, okay, so here, the three on the bottom, means that's the cubed root, so this is going to be the cubed root of eight, the two is just your power, so that just stays squared, 
Okay, the cubed root of 8 is 2 because 2 cubed gives you 8. So 2 squared is 4. Okay, if you can remember this one bit of information, you'll, you'll have, have not a problem with this. Okay, so one mark for there, one mark for the 2, and then one mark for the 4. Okay, adding algebraic fractions. Okay, we've done this already with numerical fractions. Exactly the same process. We're going to do a smile and a kiss. Okay, so we need our common denominator, which comes from our smile, and then to keep all the fractions the same, we do a kiss as well. Okay, so on the denominator, it's going to be m multiplied by m minus 1. Okay, you don't need to simplify that. I wouldn't because it factorises better for algebraic fractions. You do your first bit across, 2 times m minus 1, and then you add on 3 times m. And then on your top line, multiply your bracket. So 2m minus 2 plus 3m. Okay, and then that makes 5m minus 2 over m bracket m minus 1. Okay, three marks here. Firstly, for the denominator. Secondly, for a correct top line. And then third, for the uh, simplification on the top line there. Okay, question 9 here, the diagram shows part of this graph, y equals 8 plus 2x minus, 8x, uh, minus x squared. Okay, now quite a tricky question, but quadratic graphs, we know all our facts. Okay, so to find the coordinates of a and b, we know that these coordinates a and b are both on the x-axis. Okay, so for part a here, they're on the x-axis. And one of our facts we know is that if on the x-axis y is equal to 0, so this y is equal to 8 plus 2x minus x squared, that really means 0 is equal to 8 plus 2x minus x squared. Okay, and then this negative x squared makes it a bit tricky. What I would do to make this easier is I would cancel everything out from this side and get it over here. So add x squared to both sides, so it's going to be x squared. Take away 2x to cancel that out, and then take away 8 is equal to 0. Okay, and then to solve, we need to factorise. We've got a quadratic equation, we've got an x squared and an x. So we've got a quadratic equation, so let's solve it. Okay, let's factorise that. Okay, x and x. Because it's a negative at the end, it's a plus and a minus. Factors of 8 that gives us 2 is 4 and 2. It's not going to be 4 take away 2, because that would be a positive 2. So it's 2 take away 4. So x plus 2 equals 0, which means x would be negative 2, or x minus 4 equals 0, so x equals 4. Now the question up here asks us to find the coordinates of a and b. So I know here if x is negative 2 and 4, a is negative 2, 0, and b is 4, 0. So a is negative 2, 0, and b is 4, 0. Okay, and if a mark's there, you'll get one mark for having it equal to 0, a second mark for factorising, a third mark for solving, and then a fourth mark for the coordinates. Okay, so you don't want to miss out those coordinates because you've done all the hard work and you don't want to make it, you don't want to give up the easy mark at the end. Okay, for part B, the equation of the axis of symmetry, well, if you know this is negative 2 and you know this is 4, the axis symmetry is going to be bang in the middle of those two. Okay, so the axis symmetry is x equals halfway between negative 2 and 4 is 1. Okay, and that's just one mark there. Okay, so one mark in part B. And then C is hence find the maximum value of that uh, function, that y equals 8 plus 2x minus x squared. Now the maximum value is going to be that height there. Okay, which we know is when x is 1. So we want to know the y value. And we know y is given by that formula. And we want to know, right, okay, what height is it? What's the y coordinate when x is 1? So let's take out x, sub in 1. 8 plus 2 ones of 2, take away 1. 8 plus 2 is 10, take away 1 is 9. Okay, and in there, a mark for sub in the 1. And then a mark for getting your maximum value. Okay, it's probably worth there actually just a wee statement at the end as well. Max value is 9. 
is in there. Okay, let's move on. Okay, we're looking for the graph below shows two straight lines. Those two straight lines, the lines intersect at the point P. Find algebraically the coordinates of point P. Okay, so algebraically means we're not doing drawing the graphs. Okay, we're not allowed to draw the graphs and solve it and get the point of intersection. We have to do it algebraically, which is nice. We prefer that. Okay, it's much, much easier, much, much more, much less time consuming. Sorry. Okay, now if we want to find the point of intersection here, like on the graphs, we know it's simultaneous equations. Okay, so y is equal to 3x minus 2. So x plus 2y equals 10. Okay, now our normal way of doing simultaneous equations is having xy number, xy equals a number, and then we get something the same and we eliminate. Okay, now to do that, which I imagine a lot of you would prefer, we need to rearrange this top equation. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and just do a wee bit of rearranging first. Okay, so I'm going to take away y from both sides and I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Okay, because I quite like my x's to stay positive on this side just to make it nicer. So add 2 to both sides and take away y from both sides. Okay, and then that's going to give us a 2 left here because the y's cancelled and then a 3x minus y. Okay, so that changes that top. That changes that top one to 3x minus y is equal to 2. Now, the other way to do it is by substitution, which some of you may prefer. That's fine. Either way, I'll get you the right answer. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make these so the y's are the same. Okay, so now if we times that top one by 2, so we've got two y's in both. Okay, and when we do that, that gives us 6x minus 2y is equal to 4. Okay, now remember our little rhyme, if the signs are the same, we subtract. These signs are different, so we're going to add the two equations together. Okay, and when we do that, x adds 6x is 7x, 2y add negative 2y is 0. Brilliant, that's how we get rid of them. And then 10 add 4 is 14. 7x is 14, so x is 2. Okay. Nextly, we, we don't want just x, we want the y coordinate as well. So y is equal to 3x minus 2 from up here. But now we know that x is 2. So y is equal to 3 2 is minus 2. 3 2 is 6, take away 2 is 4. Now the coordinates isn't just this. Your coordinates, your point of intersection is equal to 2, 4. Okay, and then marking, you're going to get one mark for making them the same, one mark for your x, one mark for your y, and then one mark for your point of intersection. Okay, and then question 11. Hey, part of the graph y equals a cos bx. We know that a there is the amplitude. Okay, so that a is going to be 6 for a mark. And b is a number of waves. But importantly, is the number of waves in 360. So we've got a spot there that that's not 360. So if we've got two cos waves in 120, we're going to have three 120s. So we're going to have six waves overall, and that's your second mark. Okay, again, not an ideal question because the numbers are the same, but I'm hoping you get the idea. Just remember, that's the amplitude. This is the number of waves inside 360. Okay. And... A couple of questions to go. Now, in triangle ABC, show that cos B is equal to 11 over 16. Okay, so non-calculator paper, that's absolutely fine because it's not asking us to find B, it's just asking us to find cos B. Okay, so it's taking out the need for a calculator there. Okay, now we are dealing with something to do with an angle and we have all three sides. Okay, now you're looking at non-right angle triangles vast, vast majority of the time in these national five papers, you're going to be looking at either your sine rule or cosine rule. Now, if you go to your formula sheet, the one that uses all three sides to find an angle is your cosine rule for an angle. So it's cos, hold on, I'll just change back to black so I can mark it. Okay, so cos of the angle in this case, well, that's your cosine rule there. From the formula sheet now. We know that's just a general case, so we're not looking for cos A here. What we need to think about is, okay, right, if that's the angle A, the only time the side A appears is at the end. 
okay, and we know that the letters and the angles are the same or opposite each other. So even though this isn't A we're working with, if we want to work with that angle, whatever angle we're working with, the opposite side is what we take away. So this is going to be cos B, which is absolutely fine. Okay, but in here, the important thing is, doesn't matter what B and C are, they're going to be the other two, but that 3 has to be at the end. So cos B is going to be 2 squared, add 4 squared, take away 3 squared, all over 2 times 2 times 4, which means cos B, 2 squared is 4, 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, 2 times 2 is 4 times 4 is 16, and then cos B, 4 adds 16, so 20 take away 9 is 11. And that is, I've shown that. Okay, so, one mark there, one mark for, again, substituting in one mark for showing it. Okay, 13, the rectangle has length 4 root 3 and breadth 2 root 6. Calculate the area of the rectangle. Okay, now subs are here, they're just here to scare you. You've been asked to find the area of a rectangle, you've been able to do that for a number of years now. Okay, the area of a rectangle is length times breadth. It just so happens the length and breadth here are subs. So length is 4 root 3, breadth is 2 root 6. Okay, and then what we have to do is just say, right, okay, so multiplying this, I'm going to do 4 times 2 because they're both numbers. It makes it nice and easy. So it's 8 root 3 times root 6 is root 18. Okay, but it wants the sub in its simplest form, so we know root 18, we can simplify, so it's going to be root 9 times root 2. Okay, because 9 is a square number and it's a factor of 18, root 9 is just 3, so that turns into 3, root 2 you can't do, so you change that, so that's 8 times 3 root 2, and then the 8 3s make 24, so it's 24 root 2. Okay, you've got one mark, nice and easy, just for having the timing. Okay, we know the times that get the area, the time zone. Second mark for doing this multiplication of the subs properly, and then a third mark for simplifying. Okay, now 14, I'm just going to do a wee bit with, I'm not going to finish it off because I need to check for you whether it's actually in the course. I'm not convinced this rational bit is. Uh, okay, but I'm going to check it and I'll get back to you. Okay, we need to prove that the roots of that equation are real and rational. Now, anytime you're talking about roots and proving whether they're real or not real, you're using your discriminant, okay, which is underneath the square root of your quadratic formula. So it's b squared minus 4ac. We know that a is 2 because that's the x squared. We know that b is 3 because that is the x. And then c is negative 2 because that's a number at the end. So this is going to be 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 2. You need to be careful because of that negative 2. 3 squared is 9. Then we're taking away 4 times 2 is 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. So we're taking away negative 16, which is going to give us 25. Okay, now the rational bit I'm just going to ignore just now. But b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. Therefore, the roots are real and distinct, okay, which is the vast majority of questions you get on this. Okay, the rational is something else, but I'm, I'm not convinced it's in the course, and if it is, I want to check it before I go over with you rather than giving you more information. Okay, you'll get one mark here for substituting into the discriminant, and you'll get another mark for uh, calculating the discriminant, and then a third mark for your explanation at the end, which isn't complete with the question that's there, but we're not going to worry about that at the minute. Okay, and that's us done. Right, thanks for that. I'll, uh, again, let me know if you need anything else. Probably some of that wasn't maybe the clearest. Uh, but, yeah, cheers.